Guess I'll just go room by room. So who left that on? Why does it seem like people left suddenly? There are still boxes in the foyer waiting to be unpacked, but all the books are out? Weird. Oop. Whoa. That was cool. The Killing of JFK, a theory by Ben Allman. You've seen the movie, discovered the truth. I wonder if that's a real book. I mean, there's an Isbin down there and everything. Probably is a real book. Oh, the chair moves. Oh, I don't have a combination. My dad had filing cabinets like that back in the 80s. You can do better. Whoa, these are all theories about JFK. What if JFK wasn't JFK? Back to basics. Sent back in time to Dallas, 1963 again. Is there a time travel subplot here? Ooh, can I break this? Nope. Well, I'm not, not going to be a slob either. There. What's in the trash? John Russell opened his eyes and saw them, the stars, twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts, even though that place was a million miles away. No, he blinked the sleep from his eyes, looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes, he was a long way from home, but the future needed him. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk, despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He stared for a moment, processing his sick, flecked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees. He was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of a gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fiber tunic. Then fabric that strained at the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase, Matter Transference Operator. Then he passed out. John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time. Only messages had passed before, but now, a man. They needed him now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions from the council had been clear. What to procure, what to construct from it, how to assemble it, so he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time. And now he stood there on the bridge of the starship Archimedes, command of the vessel, because only he, who had saved the president's life twice before, could helm the naive crew to their destiny, the fate of the galaxy. So there was a reference to Stephen King earlier in this game, and now all this JFK stuff. Stephen King wrote a book about the day JFK died. Is, am I supposed to believe that my dad is Stephen King? But Stephen King lives in Maine, not Oregon. Hi, Lighter. Hi, Lighter. Ooh, a laser disc player. Huh. Looks like he was trying to sell something, maybe? So, should I go back out into the hallway or go through this other door? Boone County Telephone Directory. Fan works. That is. June, so it's probably going to be warm out. Might as well leave the fan on. Electrical inspection form. It's unclear if there are any deficiencies. Technically, the wiring is up to spec. System is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no clear reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupts circuits wired directly behind the surface. Huh. No current safety concerns. No pun intended. And that's from last September. Oh, another one of these. 
He wants to come in a set. Oh, am I? Interesting. Yeah, I thought there were stairs there. I seemed kind of tall in relation to the rest of the room. That one book looks different. Bishop Gray. The Gray Ghost. Grab Dad's second book? Oh, so he is a novelist. And it is about JFK. Wait, that wasn't his book in here, was it? That wasn't a Terrence Greenbrier book. No, Ben Ullman. That's right. So what is Dad's first book if that's his second? Why am I going out of order? Oh, who's that? Fresh! The male gaze, how to subvert it? Yes. The accidental pariah. Uh, the accidental prophet? The accidental prophet. Seems like he was settling on that. Is that what it ended up being? The accidental pariah. That's very different from prophet. Although a prophet can certainly be a pariah. What, just a dead end? Can I just hide out here in the corner? That's what I would do as a kid. A Stranger Under My Roof by Elisa Medina the Fern. Hmm. Again, probably a real book, but they would have to get the rights for all that. Interesting. What's this? Dear Terence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequiturs from the usable copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of Home Theater Aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. If it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who could, would take half your rate to write stuff I could actually use. But David's known you for a long time, and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice thank. You should write him a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everybody will be happy. Wow. It's kind of harsh. Seems kind of personal and immature on the editor's part. So this is just a library with these two uncomfortable chairs up here. No little sofa or couch. Nowhere to canoodle. Oh. Shut the door right in my face. Alright, so that's a dead end. Oh, more paper. Ah! Whoa, can I read that? Hey, are you the new girl, Sam? I'm Tommy. I'm at the back behind you. Wave if you get this and write back. Hi, Tommy. Yes, I'm Samantha, and yes, I'm new. What's up? I just thought since you're new, maybe you could use a friend. I do not have a lot of friends other and so thought I'd ask if you don't mind. Do you mind? No, I don't mind. What do you want to ask? Was it just your uncle who went psycho, or does it run in the family? Ah, 